subs. I, I would ask him if he was here. <laughs> I'm still waiting on him. The app is, it's been updated the app for him or something like that. <clears throat> you dogs with technology. Paddy Bradley, how's it going, sir? Now, Soaps is here, guys, so I'm going to get him on and we will get going, okay? So just give me a second, Soaps, and get you going there. Just waiting for Soaps to accept and we'll be good to go. Connecting now, guys. Shane Supple, how are we? Bit scraggly there, Supple. Is your intro okay? Crack. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. You're okay. Difficulties. I'll have you back there now, live. Yeah, you're getting uh, you're getting organised uh, technology. Like me, said, a little bit a little bit slow in that regard. <laughs> I had to set up an account for you and everything. To <laughs> yeah, the, these things are a must, my friend. Um, give it a second there, so that your picture is coming and going a little bit. Are you Wi Fi or are you 3, 3G there? I'm, I'm on the Wi Fi, you only got on the 3G. No, no, it's, it's coming and going there a little bit. Your, your face is a little bit kind of, it's not as clear as, as it should be, I don't think. Out in the streets, you see, that's the problem. All right, I have you there now. Good to go. Screen is obviously a little yeah. bit thing, but um, anyway, thanks a million subs for coming on for keep, no keep problem, the right? keep the people entertained for an hour. Um, <laughs> I, no I suppose we'll, we we'll start with obviously the FAI's obvious uh, recent, obviously with Stephen Kenny coming in with McCarthy going out. Um, what's your what's your thoughts on that, and uh, what do you think Stephen Kenny will bring to the Irish setup for us, obviously supporters? Any thoughts on it? Obviously, the financial situation is, I suppose, um, forced their hand a little bit, maybe in bringing Stephen in um, as early, and obviously the situation in the world at the moment. Um, it's definitely a, a financial decision um, on that front. It's sad that Mick didn't get an opportunity to finish out his tenure in, in charge, but I suppose it's it's a business decision, really. Um, Maybe down the line we'll see if it's a good football decision or not. But Stephen's a good—he's a good man in terms of you know his football knowledge, his his background, his, the success he's had. And um, the one question you would have is how he'll um, relate to maybe the, the more senior players in the squad that are not as familiar with League of Ireland and mm. um, you know understand or respect it maybe as much as as others do. So it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. I really hope he's he's successful. I've watched a lot of twenty ones games um, and I've done a lot of them for air sport the last year or so. So um I've seen a first hand obviously playing against his teams as well down through the years. Um, you know, he sets his teams up really well, he lets them go and express themselves and gives them that freedom and um, to go and play the game the right way. So hopefully that's the case with 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 the senior team, which you know, all the fans and a lot of football people have been crying out for the the last number of years that, you know, we let the lads play. We believe we have players that are capable of it. So hopefully Stephen's the man to do that now. Do you think um, Subs is a risk? Obviously, this is a, a fair step up to what he's been obviously successful at. Obviously, it's in the obviously the Irish league and stuff. Obviously, international is it's a big, big step up. Um, you know, is is that risk there? Look at it. There's a risk with every manager when he comes into a team, but particularly one who hasn't, I suppose, managed at the highest level. Yeah, there are, there are definitely, and I think the senior players will have a big role to play in that in terms of. You know, giving them the opportunity um, to, to settle in and giving them um, their respect straight away. Really, it's it's a tricky situation on a number of fronts. Really, um, with obviously Stephen coming from where he's coming from, under the circumstances he's coming in, um, the lads will be, you know, have a lot of respect for Mick and time for Mick. He's a, he's a great man, um, a great manager, and you know, a lot of players will have a lot of time for him. So hopefully they'll put the country first, uh, and mm. any. You know they'll give Stephen a chance, I suppose, and and bring the other younger boys along with him. And um, obviously Stephen, it'll be interesting to see what he does in terms of the twenty ones, how many he he might promote, um, mm. and if he feels he'll, he'll get more by promoting them. And um, maybe earlier there's, you know, more than a handful there that are capable. I think of stepping up, but um, it's tricky integrating them into the into the senior team and when to do it. Obviously the timing, 
as well. How much time is he going to have to prepare for these qualifiers or these these playoffs when they do happen? Um, so there's a lot to come into it, and obviously the press as well. Um, he's been the darling of the press for the last number of years. Yeah, and you know we all know what they're like, and they can turn quick enough on them as they did with Brian Kerr. So um, it'll be interesting if that does happen. Hopefully it doesn't, but how how he copes with that as well. Do you think um, Robbie Keane will have a have a play subs, or do you think it's kind of that he's just going to go with his own? Because there's a lot of lot of talk yeah. about that. Yeah, it seems like it's gone too far um, now at this stage. From listening to reports over the weekend and that, and that that Robbie is in negotiations to um, get an exit package, I suppose, from the FEI. So I think yeah, Stephen wants to bring in his own people who he trusts, which is fair enough. Um, I think it's only right that he gets to bring in. His own people as well, um, from the get go, um, so yeah, I think Robbie will 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 move on and obviously concentrate in Middlesbrough more than likely. Um, I see that obviously John O'Shea is going to the under twenty ones. I'm sure he'll be a big, big, you know, personality for them guys. Would you say there's any chance of any of them guys coming in in the next period of time before this playoff? Any of the younger guys that Kenny would or yeah, might stick with so. the seniors. I think he'll bring a few in. I do. I think he trusts them. Um, I think a lot of them are, are playing, you know, football at a at a decent level in the UK, whether it's Premier League or or a Championship level on a regular basis. So um, I think he will. I don't think Stephen's afraid, and I, I hope he can. He hasn't been afraid during his whole career to do that, and I, I hope he does the same now when he steps up to the senior to set up and and give these lads a chance because the likes of of, of Malumbi and. And that there, who I've seen firsthand, is excellent. Conor Ronan as well. And, um, you know, they have a lot of experience under their belt for such a young mm. age. So hopefully, um, hopefully he knows he's not afraid to do that. Yeah, no, it's good. I suppose, just to go back to it, look at, I suppose, I wouldn't, you know, have a huge inkling into your early career, I suppose, really. If you want to, I suppose, just talk us through, obviously, you started over at Ipswich, but we'll say before that, you're obviously with Bridget's, obviously, as a young fella growing up and stuff like that. But what was your your club in Dublin, your soccer club, and how did it kind of transpire then? Did you have a few tries with different clubs or were, were Ipswich hunting you? Or how did that transpire that you obviously ended up going over to Ipswich as a youngster? Um, well, I suppose my first club was my local one, Verona, around the corner there in Blanchestown. And that's mm. where I started off in the mini leagues first. And then with them, <clears throat> up to under 10s, I think it was. And then on farm, or they were knocking for a year or two, but I eventually... You know, moved moved across to to Whitehall with them and had a couple of great years with them. I, I barely, well, a couple of great years in terms of trophies, but not a whole lot to do as a goalkeeper. I don't know how yeah. I ever got across the water because we had a, a really good team there, and I think nine of the lads went away to either Scotland and or England in the end um, to play professionally. So, yeah, we we had a good bunch. Um, in terms of clubs, I had a number of clubs I was on trial with. And, um, a number of offers on the table um, prior to, to going across to, to Ipswich, um, the likes of Aston Villa and Everton and that. Um, so I was an Aston Villa fan as a kid, so everyone thought I was going to sign for a Villa. Um, yeah. But I just, I, I felt that Ipswich was the best chance uh, for me to progress. And um, they had a great reputation of bringing young players through. And for me personally, the goalkeeping coach, I just brought through Richard Wright um, as well. Mm. He'd moved on to Arsenal and, I just I trained with him a couple of times when I was over there, and I just felt for me I, I needed to be around him every day and to progress. So um, and from the family's point of view, it was a great area to to, to live in. Um, the club really looked after the young lads, which can be unusual over there, you know, because mm. obviously you're you're a piece of meat to them more often than not. But Ipswich went above and beyond to look after um, the players. There's a lot of us that from across the water that came over um, and we had we had good times there and a, a good bit of success uh, especially at the youth level and you know a lot of us broke into the first team eventually as well You won a youth cup did you with Ipswich did I see? Yeah we won a youth cup in 2005 and <laughs> we don't know how we managed to do it in the end we ended up playing Southampton in the final it's a two-legged um, final and they had the likes of Lilana and Theo Walcott Nathan Dyer um, Garrett Bale was on the bench for them as well so uh, I think we, 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 we half fluked it in the end. We scored in the in extra time in the 118th minute. So, but that was uh, that was some crack actually that night. <laughs> I said that. And tell me this: so, so, as a professional, I suppose you know, <clears throat> as a young fella, I mean, obviously it's tough over there being away from home and stuff like that. Did you find was there many Irish guys over there with you, or were you just housed with a few English guys or guys who were joining up at the same time? Or and how did you find that? you know, being away at such a young age for, for the period of time that you were away? 
Um, the early days are the easier days, to be honest. Um, there was a couple of Irish lads over there. They were kind of coming to the end and they were you know, eventually moved on. But um, there was a couple that joined six months to a year after me. Uh, some of the lads came from home farm as well. There was myself, Michael Sinnott and Owen Garvin. We all played in the same schoolboy team at home farm. So we all ended up in digs together as well, which it, it helped, I think. Um, for for especially those lads when they come over to maybe settle in, there's a couple of lads from Cork, um, and one or two English lads in the digs as well. So there was anywhere between five and, and ten lads in the digs at any one time. Now that can be can be good, but it can be also hard to get your own space and a, and a break away from the lads. But um, now the early days were easy. I was doing what I wanted to do, and all I, all I cared about was was playing football really and and trying to be as the best I could be and and progress. So um, it was later on in my kind of career that. Um, things started to change for me really Did you find subs when you are away or more so when you came back actually did you find that your, your friends that you grew up with younger guys who obviously didn't make it or whatever like that was there any change or would you have still have the same group of friends even to the day Yeah I'm actually really lucky um, there's 10 of us um, from school days in St. Declan's we would be really close and tight-knit group. They they would have always come all across the water to me as well at different times and, you know, stayed in the hotels or stayed in the house with me. Um, so, yeah, they were they were great. One of the lads actually came over for, for three months at one stage when I think in 2007 and eight, and, and stayed with me. I got him a job in the Irish bar and uh, we did a bit of crack for a few months. So, yeah, no, I was lucky. And, you know, whether some of the lads were Plunkett's lads, some of the lads were, were Bridget's lads. So um, I came back then and, and settled into Bridget's, you know, so easily it was it was mm. great them playing against the lads at Plunkett's in the county finals and that so we're, we're still good friends to, to this day and obviously lads are, are getting older now getting married and that so um, there's other priorities but uh, mm. yeah no I'm very lucky with with the uh, the friends I had definitely mm. tell me this subs is um, what was the <clears throat> obviously you know it's a difficult question and a lot of people will find it difficult to answer was there any particular moment when you were playing, obviously, over in Ipswich that, that or did, was it an accumulation of time that kind of, we'd say, changed your, your mindset on your journey as, as a professional footballer, obviously outside of the frustration, obviously, of the playing side of things, you know? Yeah, it definitely was an accumulation of things. I kind of remember when I first started to, to Festa, really, um, when I kind of broke into the first team, I was only 17, and... Um, I think it was my first Christmas um, over there. Um, I had to stay over and, you know, there's a lot of football obviously goes on around that time of year. So, and that wasn't a problem really. It was just the, the dynamics of the dressing room and the players and, you know, the way they were. Um, I was just seeing things that I didn't really like that I didn't think, you know, I thought it was a team game. I thought we were all in it together and just little things started to make me question really. Um is this what I thought it would be? Um, I was mm. very naive in that sense, and that's probably coming from the GA background as well, you know, where you play for the, your own club and, you know, you play with lads you've grown up with and they'll, you know, run through a brick wall for you, where that wasn't the case. And there was a lot of backstabbing and, you know, mm. speaking behind back and, backs and stuff like that that I didn't really like. And um, it just kind of went on from there. And um, it took probably four years after that before I really pulled the trigger and decided it was time to time to move on. But... I stayed for for other reasons, for other people as well. Um, obviously the opportunity there and financially as well. Um, but there was more to yeah. more to life for me than than that. So um, you know, I look back now and I have <clears> absolutely <throat> no regrets on the decision I made at the time. Yeah, and, and and I think that's good because a lot of the time you see guys coming back from the UK, and it's, I think it's 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 very easy for people to say, ah, he didn't make it, or blah blah blah. It, it, that's why it's interesting when you you ask the question and you get kind of the the deep down insight into it. Yeah, well, it's hard to even explain to people when I did come back. You know, people are you know, stopping you and asking you, and they don't really understand that they're only seeing what they see maybe on the, on the telly, and you know that you're crazy and you're mad. Um, why they would think that, um, giving up what I uh, what I'd given up, but it was just there was there was more for me. I wanted more out of you know my career, out of life in general, I suppose. And I was lucky enough. I realised that at a young age that because I could have easily stuck around, and you know I think I would have done okay out of the game. I would have been you know mm. made a career definitely out of the game over there, but I wouldn't have been happy. And you know when I came back and to do and be part of what I was part of from the GA to 
um, with Bridget's and winning county championships and and then with Bowes as well and getting the opportunity to you know to play with play with them and be part of that club as well um, you know it was mm. I'm delighted I did make that decision and just only confirmed it for me really and now I, I suppose one question I suppose subs and I think it's for everybody who's who's watching on here Roy Keane <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I suppose as I a say? as a person, you know what what's he like as a person? Obviously, you you he coached you. I know things mightn't have worked out in the end, but I suppose when you first met him over there, how did it transpire? You were obviously at the club when he joined. Yeah, well, I was actually out on loan at the time um, at Oldham when he when he came in. So there was thirteen of us out of contract um, towards the end of that season, and I mean, it was one of three that was offered a new deal. And to be honest, the only reason I signed the contract was to get you know things in order sell my house and, and move a few things mm. on before I came home. I, I made my decision that summer, you know, I was coming home, so it didn't matter really. Um, Roy w was kind of irrelevant either way, you know, although he was one of a, you know, a hero of mine growing up, as he was most Irish um, sports people. So it was mm. great to be be around him and that. Um, he's a volatile individual. Um, you just don't know some days what you're going to get with him, what what person is going to show up to training. Um, I would say, obviously, looking at his time at Ipswich, it, it wasn't a successful time. I think he lost the best really. And that's, and we're afraid of him really, and didn't want to didn't want to play for him. So, um, yeah, it was. Uh, I only had three three months or so with him, but um, he was good in the way he dealt with me in the end. But um, mm. yeah. I heard a few stories since I left and that and what he was like, but I saw a few things at first hand that I wouldn't really approve of. Um, so, mm. yeah. Because he obviously had him at the Irish squad as well in, in recent times. Yeah, yeah. And I hadn't um, seen would him you say he years. changed anything in that? I don't think so. Um, I was around the squad at the time. Things kind of kicked off a little bit as well and, um, you know, came out later on in the press and that. So, I I would say no, he was still the the same the same guy, definitely. Um, I don't think he'd maybe learned too much. Um, but it's unfortunate because you know he's a great player and you know a lot of players and people looked up to him. But I just think he he possibly missed playing the game and missed contributing that way, and he he couldn't really affect it the way he wanted to off the pitch. Um, that was possibly a reason for maybe some of his decisions and his way of approaching things and um, with players. So. And um, it's unfortunate, but it was yeah, it was good to see him and catch up with him and, and probably properly thank him for looking after me that time and getting me getting me out of there when I as quick as I wanted to get out of Ipswich. No, that's good. Uh, Jack Byrne, <coughs> subs was he? He was around the Ireland squad when you were there. He was just popping in, was he? He wasn't. It was me. It was it was it was myself and Graham Burke at the time from the League of Ireland that got called in. So I think Jack Graham was Burke. in a couple a couple of squads later. Um, Jack came mm. in, but. Obviously played against Jack a number of times um, with with Bowles when he was when he was at Rovers and you know good player talent yeah <clears> the <throat> best in the league definitely by a by a good way I think and definitely mm. capable of getting you know moving higher up wherever that may be England or, or wherever else if 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 he wants to I think but it's, he seems happy here now and he's enjoying his football and I suppose that's the most important thing and um, he's he's found a, a good home there. Um. So you came back anyway, <clears throat> back to Crumlin United again. Did you get did you get the grow back for playing then when you came back? Obviously you went back to Bridges as well at the same time. Yeah, and that was a, a funny one because I'd been coaching out there for a number of years with in Crumlin. They were good enough to, to let me use their facility for uh, the goalkeeping academy I had. And the Martin Lochran out there who's kind of runs that runs the show out there from the first team throughout the whole club. So he'd been on to me a number of times to, to try to get me back playing, but I wasn't having a bar of it really and Eventually, then he kind of cracked me down and he said, listen, I'm in a bad way. I've no goalkeeper for the game coming up and could you step in and, and give me a dig out? So I felt obligated to do it because he was so good to me to and let me use the facility. So I said, yeah, I'll do it, but it'll be only for one game and that's it. And I played the game, really enjoyed it. And he said, listen, would you help me out for the rest of the month? And I said, yeah, the GA season is finished. So I'll, um, I'll, I'll continue to play until... Um, that comes back in January, I suppose. So I did that, and January came around, and Martin asked me, "What would you, what do you want to do?" And I said, "Well, I think I can manage both." 
uh, I'd like to stay on. He said you don't have to train or anything if you if you if you don't want to or if you can't because of the GA. But so I stayed on and finished the year out with the lads and had a great year. Um, played in the Aviva in the FBI Intermediate Cup final against the other Kenny Rovers and beat them. Just missed out on the league in the last game of the season against Bluebell. So really good time, great bunch of lads and a great club as well. So and then opportunity came for me to to go back playing um, at a higher level again and I wanted to give it another crack. So I did with both. Mm. And it went well for you at Bowes as well. Obviously, I know you were carrying a bit of a hip or whatever throughout it, but you managed it fairly well and obviously had a very good stint with Bowes. Yeah, I only had really two and a half seasons. Um, it felt like a mm. lot longer, to be honest. Um, I really enjoyed the decision back in the end. And, you know, from Keith Long, the manager, to Trevor Crawley and, you know, the people um, involved in that club players, the fans, everything. We had a really good thing. It was as close as you could get to a GA club at the time. And, you know, we, we didn't win any silver at the time. And, you know, we brought the club on to a certain level and, and obviously got European football in the end, which is great for a, a part-time club as such. And they're, they're continuing to do really well, uh, you know, on and off the pitch. So, um, it was a great time and just unfortunate that the hip gave up in the end, but that's yeah. life and um, I had a good stint, so I can't complain too much. Uh, <clears throat> goalkeepers today, subs. So obviously, you have obviously Alisson at Liverpool there. Obviously, you know, a lot of goalkeepers in today's game are pretty much like sweepers. It's effectively like Loco in the GEA. You've got, you know, your Alisson, the Man City keeper. They're all kind of playing with their foot. What's your... What's your thoughts on the way the, the goalkeepers are in today's game around the world? Are, are you more of a, you know, old schooler or, you know, yeah. get out and play? I'd be more of an old school now. Um, I like a bit of both, and, um, to be honest, but I think maybe you've gone away a little bit from the, the basics of the game. Um, and maybe a bit too much um, with playing with your feet and that. We neglect some of the you know, the, the, the basics um, of the game. So, um, yeah, like it's, it is the way the game has gone, I suppose. And the first thing they look at now is the distribution. Um, and I think that's the way it's been in the GA for a number of years now. It's it's not essentially your, your goalkeeping ability as such. It's more of a, mm. you know, a quarterback um, really and, and how you can retain possession for the, for the team um, is, the, is the most important thing, I think, in, in, on both sides of the game now, you know, whether it's GA or soccer for the goalkeeper. And I, 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 I think that's with, obviously, I don't think a lot of people realise that you, you have an All-Ireland from 2013, a National League medal, yeah. and three Leinsters with Dublin as well, on, obviously on the Dublin panel. Um, I suppose, what's your, what's your thoughts on, obviously, you've played, obviously, with Klukko for quite a while. Uh, very similar keepers to, uh, from, from my take on it um, in relation to kicking the ball for a start. Obviously, both left-footed. And both ping a ball, obviously, I played against, obviously, with and, and against both of you. Um, yeah. what's, what was your, you know, your thoughts on, on, I suppose, him playing and you not playing or along the way, I suppose, really? What, what did you feel uh, you had to do to get playing? Uh, he had to retire, really, to be honest. Um, and I, I knew that going in, that was the case. <laughs> um, I was hoping maybe he'd be a bit, <laughs> he retired a bit earlier. But, uh, listen, he looked after himself uh, really well. So, mm. He's obviously had great longevity in his career, and that, and um, he was brilliant. He had a great year working with him, um, a real, a real proper worker, and which you know I liked, and which I was, I was myself. Um, I think we learned a lot from each other. Maybe more on the technical side, possibly he learned from me. But like he's on another level to anyone, mm -hmm. me, anyone else, um, on the distribution side of the game. And I know he's been a part of that Dublin setup for a long, long time, which does help. Um. Lads understand, you know, what he's about. He's, he's played with a lot of the guys on a regular basis. So there's a, a great understanding. Um, you know, it's not just his distribution. It's obviously the movement out the pitch and, you know, seeing the space mm. that's available. So, um, but now he's on a, he's on another level. There'll be no one like him ever again, I don't think. From what you've seen, I have two questions, um, subs on that. Do you think he has the attributes? Obviously, you've seen a lot of goalkeepers throughout your soccer career. Would he have, would he have had the attributes to be a pro soccer goalkeeper? Um, possibly. Yeah, I think he'd have the attributes. Um, I think whether he would have the opportunity or not, I don't know. Because of his size, I think it would have been tricky for him at a, at a higher level. Yeah. 
even for myself, I'm not the tallest, like, you know, I'm, I'm six foot, but I'll be maybe an inch or two taller than, than Stephen. Um, but it is tricky on that front, you know, um, to be given the opportunity to, to break in. There, there's not too many nowadays, especially going back years ago. Yeah, you'd, you know, obviously Shea Given was, was one and, you know, you've got the likes of Barthez, but they were kind of, you know, the older um, regime um, yeah. nowadays. They're, they're looking for a lad 6'3", six, 6'4", six, really. Um, now, whether that's right or wrong, I don't know. But, um, yeah, I think he would have definitely had the attributes and the mentality. Without a doubt, he'd have had the mentality to be a, a top player. Um, but whether he would have got the opportunity, I'm not quite sure. Uh, how much How much do you think it will affect Dublin when he retires? Because I definitely think um, it will. Ah, but I would have shot him, but I would have will. Um, it just depends, I suppose, on how strong the team is um, mm. that's left behind. Um, it'll be tricky for whoever steps up into that role. There's obviously going to be a lot of focus on them. Um, so they'll have to be mentally tough as, as he was. Um, so, yeah, I, I think they will struggle. Uh, you know, it depends on who's coming up, you know, the likes of Kerry, how strong they are in other counties around to take... Um, to seize the opportunity maybe of a year or two there be, before someone settles into the role completely because I think it will take that time for them to settle in especially at championship level you can play all you want at league but I think championship will be a different kettle of fish um, mm. so I pity the the next man up <laughs> um, I suppose you're, you're where, now I suppose subs in your own career how, how, how have you found it obviously with the club obviously Bridget's you know, and obviously no disrespect to them, you know, I suppose going back a few years, county titles, competing, you know, county finals quite regularly, a little bit slow the last couple of years. How how have you found it being back involved in the panel with obviously the group of guys that you have and where do you think obviously Bridges can go moving forward for the next year or two? Will they, will they compete for, for a county championship soon or...? No, I think it'll be years before they compete again. And um, being truthful, um, I think they're definitely in a big transition there. Um, there doesn't seem to be the quality and and standard of player coming through. Um, yeah. that we had, we were lucky. Maybe took took our eye off the ball a little bit, and maybe developing players. And um, because of the big catchment area that we have around Dublin Fifteen, but obviously Castlenock mm-hmm. are there now as well. And a relatively you know young club, but they've uh, come in and 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 taken probably you know, a number of, of players that would have traditionally been Bridget's players. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's there's a lot of regards to my generation and, and older, and you know, obviously like yourself would have played against and that, that have, have moved on. And mm. um, there's just not those leaders around anymore, unfortunately, which you need in, the, in a club to, to help the young lads transition. So I think it's going to be a, a few barren years on that front. And I think the main objective is to stay in um, Division 1 of, of the league, really. Um, will be the main one and try to get back into senior senior championship again if possible but I think yeah that's going to be a tricky ask at the moment and how's the how's the hips ups how are you fitness wise I know obviously you're using obviously the Glen Royal obviously, with yeah. me, obviously but how's the how are you mobility wise now at the moment I'm grand day to day like um, not a bother um, obviously do a lot of swimming now to try to take the pressure off the twisting and turning and that really I struggle with so I have to be careful what I do and I need to obviously keep the mobility in it as, as long as I can before potentially have to go under the knife and get something done with it. But um, hopefully that's a long way down the road. So, yeah, yeah, it's grand. It's just a, it's, it's managing, you know, and I suppose down through the years, I've always tried to look after myself the best as I can. So um, I continue to do that now. I, I love keeping fit and that. So um, it's just the right things really and not being stupid. Yeah, and you couldn't. Is is the training? We said even the Bohemians level subs. Like obviously, club senior football training is high intensity as well. I mean, goalkeepers obviously can manage themselves in training and stuff like that. But was that level of training just too much for that that hip? In the I know in the short term you'd have got away with it up till your forty probably. I know it's the long term down the road fifty fifty five. What you're going to have to do if you kept playing is that the case? Yeah, well, I suppose my last year I was really struggling, like with the hip, um, from week to week training and, and playing games. I was in a bad way after games. You know, it, it would take me a while to 
to recover even getting in and out of bed was was tricky so um it's obviously the nature of the, of the position as well and, and especially with training and that there's a lot of twisting and turning and i just noticed there was a couple of things and i think my experience maybe got me away with them um in that last season with bows um things that were my movement and that wasn't as fluid as it i not it normally would be and a couple mm-hmm. of things as I said I was getting away with and just because I was supposed I was you know had the experience behind me it allowed me to get away with it but it was only a matter of time before I was going to be the cause of conceding goals and that that normally I wouldn't so um I knew there was something up and I, around August time that 2018 season I got scans done on the hip and that and um I knew the extent of the damage but so I kept it quiet till the end of the season and, and I wasn't really training at all I think I trained one night a week uh, and just played the game on the Friday and that was it in the end so I managed to, to just manage through that season really and I knew what I was what was the the end game I had to step away unfortunately so um, but I had to wait and break the news to the gaffer at the end of the season That's tough like and go back to the when you were calling to the international squad subs but obviously all them big big names how did you find that level of training in there was that hip at you when you were training at that time with the Irish team in relation to what you could do in the sessions? Because obviously there was plenty of talk that you might get a, get to play here like and start a game for the international senior team. Yeah, it would have been nice in the end, but uh, I mm. kind of knew that like at the time, even though there were friendlies in the off-season in the summertime, I, I knew that obviously Martin and Roy were under a little bit of pressure and the like, results are important. Um, if I was going to get a run out, it might have been the USA game, but um, that didn't happen in the end. But yeah, the, the hip was at me that time. It was difficult mm. because I would have I would have been still playing with Bowes on a Friday. Um, we, we played against Rovers on the Friday night, <laughs> myself and Graham Burke, and uh, played against each other. And then we were in the next day. Now, we didn't have to train, but um, it was tricky. And then I had to go down to Limerick and, and play the game the following Friday after coming back from France. Um, so... It was it was a lot of a lot on the body, um, and like even like in international football, there's not a whole lot of training involved really. It's just lads taking over really and just keeping the sharpness there. So I could get away with it to an extent, um, but yeah, I I, I definitely mm. was was feeling it at that time, um, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, it was a good, it was enjoyable. Um, it was good to catch up with a few lads who I would have played, you know, with whether it was in England or in underage football with Ireland and that growing up. So it was good to mm-hmm. catch up with a few of them after a long, long time. You know, a lot of us were the same age group, the likes of Shane Long and Seamus Coleman, who I would have played twenty ones with, and then obviously John Walters from my time at Ipswich. Um, it was good to catch up with all those guys. I met um I met Shane Long one time, many years ago, and and this is this is how long it is. That he bought me two fat frogs and crystals the same night. That's how long <laughs> ago that is. That's how long. They didn't have to get with him, did he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I suppose to where, to where you're at now, so it's obviously you've, you've had a successful season and obviously were there covering the soccer last season. Um, I've watched you a couple of times, very enjoyable, I must say. Um, how, how are you enjoying that aspect of your, of your career now? And do you see yourself in the long term, you know, getting, getting better at that and, you know, maybe forging out some sort of a career at it? Um, I don't know. It was something that I were kind of... I wasn't sure whether I would go into it, to be honest, um, afterwards. But obviously with the hip and that, I can't do a whole lot on the training pitch anymore. So um, I wanted to stay involved if I could in some way. And they were, were good enough to give me an opportunity in that um, to get involved. Whether I'd stay involved long-term when I see it as a career long-term, I don't think so, to be honest, Mort. Um, no. I think I'd like to do, I'd love to stay involved in sport in some way, maybe in the, the business side of things, maybe, or the operational side of things in, in some shape or form, maybe down the line. Um, it's hard, obviously, having left the game um, to start up a new career as well. Uh, so I wanted to give that a bit of time and focus on that, really. Um, and that's the, that's the aim over the next couple of years, is to see where, where I'm going long term um, with, with that career really and yeah it's nice um, to, to stay involved and uh, to keep my eye on, in on the game and that and it's, to see what goes on behind the scenes and how much effort goes into it as well and preparation um, you know it's great but I don't think long term well, um, I'll stay involved in that side no um, Obviously you went, you went away when you were young um, I'd, I'd imagine your leaving cert was kind of put aside yeah. as a youngster. Um, have you have you looked at or, or are you currently involved in study or has it something that interests you to obviously go into that business management side of things? 
yeah, um, I suppose that was one thing. It took me a long time to probably um, get up the courage to go back and, and, and do something in terms of the education because like, I left after my junior cert in 2002. I was just gone 15. So um, did a little bit of education over there, but it's just ticking a box, really. It's not sufficient enough um, to, to help you with a career after after football. So um, I wish I kind of had known a bit more about that really because I had plenty of time. Although I did try to do bits and pieces, they weren't enough. Um, really so um, it took me a while before I went back and uh, did a did a life coaching diploma and, and then went on and did a HR diploma as well so it's something I'd like to do is maybe get a degree down the line um, you know in, in maybe business management of some shape or form potentially so it's something now yeah that uh, I'm keen to do I have the time now whereas football obviously when I was playing it was very dedicated to it and, t- and tried to look after myself and I took all my time really on my focus even when I, you know, you're not on the pitch or the training pitch you're, you're still thinking about it and trying to look after yourself and mm. it just consumes you really so um, I wasn't capable of doing two things <laughs> at the one time so um, now I have yeah, the time to, to put, put it into the other career so that's what I'm going to do um, I suppose do you miss it? Do you miss the pro ball subs uh, at that level of, of competitiveness? Because I know obviously you're, you're a competitive bugger over the years. You miss that side <laughs> yeah, of it. Yeah. yeah, I miss saving penalties against you, Mort. Um, <laughs> I was at that day now. Come on now. That was my right foot, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually, I think I was only back um, that first year back playing, I think, um, with Bridget. And we, we turned up to play yeah, against the well, superstars. The superstars are apparently. It was uh that was a nice the Galacticos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Um but yeah, no, you, you of course you miss it like, you know, nothing will ever replace it really. Um it's unfortunate that we have to get old, but mm. um as I said, I'm lucky that um I had, you know, the opportunities I had and I look back with no regrets. So um I think if if people if you can say that at the end of your career then you you've done okay out of it. So um I, I, I have no regrets and I think that allows me to kind of move on and, and park it as such um, and move on in real life so um, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm happy but I do you do miss it Do you think the, the coaching aspects of, of Gaelic goalkeeping and soccer goalkeeping are are worlds apart or not as in you know if you're coaching Gaelic goalkeepers as opposed to going back into if you're if you're going to get into coaching soccer goalkeepers the, mm-hmm. dy- the dynamics are obviously a little bit different but how different is it from a coaching point of view if you're going to decide what, what trajectory you're going to go on? Yeah, it is different, I suppose, in terms of the drills and the number of attributes I suppose you need on both. I think you're a lot more involved in the game as a soccer goalkeeper than you are as a as a GA goalkeeper, really. Mm. Um, a lot of the focus is around the kickouts, as I said, and retaining possession. So I think... If you're a if you're a good kicker, uh, you know, good at distribution and, and that side of it, the goalkeeping stuff comes secondary. I do think it's important to have, you know, some basics and you know the, the drills that we do as a as a soccer goalkeeper. That they are definitely relevant because I think if if you're in a situation where you're one on one with a you know a full forward and that and you can you can make the save and you can send him down one way and and, and force him um into an error and and you know saving three points effectively for your team then why not mm. uh, why not work on that side of the game as well but I think it's definitely uh, an area that the GA they've gone away from it's not as important obviously now the, the change of rules and that there's not as as many aerial balls coming into the square anymore because possession is key and um, you know players are not you know, giving up possession willy nilly anymore mm. and that by sending high balls in so you don't have to deal too much with aerial um, bombardment or anything like that anymore so it's it's a it, it's a lot it is a lot different but I'd still practice it and I'd still work on it if I am if I was working with you know young keepers and that I mm. you know I think you need to um have the ability to to cope um you know under those situations as well so but it it is quite different to what I would have been doing day to day in in England and is um a lot of goalkeepers now subs you'll find here in particular GA wise I think you know and you mentioned it earlier I think the saving aspect of it. Is probably the last thing that people are looking for in a goalkeeper now in a GA pitch is how quick you can get the ball down and ping the ball 40, 50 yards as opposed to how good yeah. you can save the ball, which, yeah. which is obviously, you know, the economics of the game kind of upside down effectively for a goalkeeper, you know? Yeah, I, 
they should probably change the name really <laughs> from a goalkeeper to something else. I think um, <laughs> the way the game has gone, but it is like that is the goal kicker. Important, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. You could be onto something there. Um, but it is it's the restarts. It's how quickly you know if you can get it off within you know six to eight seconds. You know, I suppose the stats are out there for someone who's into that kind of stuff. In you know the opportunity mm. to convert the score, you know, end of the pitch. Um, if you can get it off that quickly, so. Um, it definitely, if you have someone who's capable of doing that, I think they take that over. You know, the ability to save it, save something going into the top corner, definitely. Um, I suppose what a question. So, on, on, in relation to when I played, obviously with Mayo, you know, the phone never stopped ringing, and people would never stop ringing you, texting you, and even boys you would, I, I would have played with at that time. We were, it, it was it, obviously we were close knit group when we were playing. But I've, I have found, obviously, since I've stopped playing, you know, the phone doesn't ring anymore. It's, it's an odd text here and there or whatever like that, realistically. Um, yeah. I, I just, just interested to see how, how it has been on your side. Obviously, you, you know, you played at a high level. Obviously, I'm sure plenty of people, as you said, would want a piece of you at the time. You know, how, is, how does the phone ring much anymore sort of thing? Yeah, it does. Like, I suppose, especially with the lads you played at a club level or... Um, a couple of lads, like in soccer, there's not too many that you would be close to after you've played the game. I'd certainly mm-hmm. say that about playing in the UK. Um, I wouldn't speak to too many people over there anymore. In terms of bows and that, there'd be a few lads I would be in contact with on a regular basis that I you know, would have got quite close to and they'd always pick up the phone to you. Um, and definitely the club lads, um, we we have a strong bond there with, with, with those guys. So we're always in touch mm-hmm. with each other. You know, trying to organise getting out of the house for a night out or something like that. You know, or um, but yeah, I know it does happen. Um, you know, if you're not as relevant or important anymore. But um, I think I was lucky enough with the the group I would have played with in, in Bridget's at the time and that as well. We were, we were close knit, so um, mm. you know, sometimes you don't want to talk to them, but um, you always you always get back to them in the end. There, uh, you know, take a nice, while. Nice to have you. Yeah, yeah. So I suppose where, where what's your obviously how are you dealing with this this being stuck at home and and you know being stuck indoors? Are you educating yourself? Are you training? You know how are you finding the days? How are you passing the days? How, how does an ex pro deal with something like uh, a pandemic like this? It's actually for me coming from where I've come from. I suppose this was was my life in England for four years um, in digs, and no car, I wasn't able to drive. And we literally went to train and came home and sat in the room. So um, I suppose I'm, I'm skilled in, <laughs> in this side of it. So <laughs> it's, not a, it's not as easy or as uh, difficult for me. Um, you find ways to entertain yourself and keep yourself busy. Obviously, I'm working from home at the moment, Monday to Friday. So trying to keep things ticking over on that front. And then, you know, mm. whether it's reading, reading or a bit of Netflix or, and obviously trying to get a workout in out, outdoors is, is tricky at times. But um uh, yeah, just plenty to keep keep me busy and keep me entertained, and you know, trying to upskill in certain areas as well is important. So that's what I'm trying to do. I don't like to to stay still too long, really. So the the myth about the Ferrari and the swimming pool and the night and the ten bed gap are probably spoof. <laughs> that's the biggest spoof I've heard. Yeah, maybe over in the UK. <laughs> I had to sell it before I came home. Uh, no chance. Jesus. <laughs> What's the, what does the future hold, Sophia? What's your what's your what's your goals? Um, are you going to get back involved? Obviously, with are you going to play with Bridget when this football season hopefully resumes? And you're going to start doing a little bit more with her this upcoming season as well? Or are you going to coaching? Or what's the future hold for you? Yeah, well, I'd be. I think I'd be doing a little bit more with her. We started. We did the the what kind did we do? Bows and shells the week before mm. that. Everything kind of shut down, and so yeah. I'll be doing a bit with them. I don't know when it's going to happen again, but um, football-wise, I'm done, done. I won't be won't be playing any football or anything like that. I won't be doing um, anything on that side of it. I do a little bit of coaching. I'm living out in Mead, so I do a bit of coaching with the Mead Miners, and the goalkeepers out there. So um, I work with them um, once a week. So I'm looking forward to getting back up and going with that again. And then it's just focusing on the career, really, and... Um, that's the that's the main thing going forward, and you know where that will take me and what I need to do to get where I want to go in the end. Whether that's you know educating myself a bit more on um, on that side of things. So um, that's what what the the future holds. Um, also building a gaff. So 
need to get that sorted out as well at some stage. Hopefully the builder providers opens up soon. Uh, yeah. We can get cracking on that. The most important part is filling the house. Remember that? <laughs> With what? <laughs> fill the rooms. Fill the rooms. Um, fill the room pictures. <laughs> um, I'll go in here, subs. So I suppose we're, we're cutting it in there fine. We've about six or seven minutes to go there. I go through a few questions here, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, from a few of the guys here that are watching on. Um, any keepers you could count as being lucky to get an Irish cap when you were challenging? I wouldn't say when you were challenging, I'd say generally over the years. Um, there was a few that were, I think, lucky enough, really, in the circumstances. You know, I don't really like to name, name yeah, them, really. It's, it's not really fair, but yeah, there were certain lads, I suppose, and the likes of Shea stepped away, and if Darren Randolph was injured or that, um, there maybe wasn't a whole lot to choose from at times. And, you know, um, yeah, definitely. And I think I would have been, even if I ever, if I had got the opportunity at the time to get a cap, yeah, I, I would have included myself as being very lucky on that front, definitely. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't like this to name the lads, but um, I think people, people will know, especially in the last eight to ten years, really, there's been one or two that you'd kind of, yeah, in any other eras, they wouldn't have probably gotten near the place. Uh, were you in the Ireland camp at the time Stephen War's WhatsApp were leaked? <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah. No comment. <laughs> no comment. Um, is, is Johnny Walters the same balloon Keno portrays him as? Johnny is one of the best um, humans I've ever come across in the game. Um, a really decent guy. Uh, he lived with me for a number of months and when he moved down to Ipswich from Chester when we signed him and a really good guy that you could actually depend on, one of the few. Um, so, um, no, he's definitely not and that was bang out of order what went on that time um, with Johnny and how he was spoken about. Um, so, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't believe that at all, at all. No, absolutely not. He's a, he's a gent. Um, who's the biggest presence you've had in the dressing room, Subs? Soccer-wise um, first. Soccer wise would have been Jim Magildan and Ipswich Town probably. Um, a real character, Northern Ireland guy from Northern Belfast. Ireland. Yeah, yeah. Would have started his career at Liverpool, never quite broke through there, but a real he ended up managing Ipswich in the end as well as soon as he retired. So he would have been a, a massive presence and character, a great, unbelievable player as well. Um loved it, loved the night out and loved having the crack as well. So um he was one of the biggest characters I would have come across. Uh GA side in your your GA career. Um Probably Paddy Andrews from Bridget's. <laughs> Paddy's a character, uh, yeah. as you well know. Um, yeah. He's a good lad. Good guy. Um, good guy to have around the place, yeah. Um, really talented player as well, obviously. And has had a great career with, with the dubs. Um, yeah. But yeah, another good lad for a night out. To, to be fair, Subs, like if there was ever a player <clears throat> who I suppose started off brilliantly years ago, sidetracked a small bit was told and I've never seen a player to take advice on as, as good and go back to doing what he was doing at the very start and obviously go on then and win whatever four or five all Irelands. I think it's, I think what Paddy has done is phenomenal. Yeah. Oh no, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. He was going probably down a, a slippery slope yeah. at one stage under Pat Gilroy and I think that was the year we got the best of him that year in the end because he wasn't involved with the Dubs 2011 and we went on and you know, we won the county championship. We we lost the, the Leinster final, unfortunately, against Gary Castle. But we got some mileage out of Paddy that year. And I don't think we would have gotten out of him if he was with the Dubs. So, um, and then from then from then on, he, he went back into the panel and he really kicked on and, you know, started to hold down a position um, with the Dubs mm -hmm. and has ended up with a, you know, a cabinet full of medals now. <laughs> um, what player in England do you think would make it to the very top that never kicked on? What player in England that I thought could make it to the very top? Um, that's a tough one. I played with a couple of lads. Owen Garvin would have been one, an Irish lad. Um, a really talented player. Um, probably didn't have the pace that was needed to step up, but the way the, the Premier League was going, he, he managed to get there at Crystal Palace, but you know, only played one or two games. But he was one for me. He was unbelievably talented, just the quickest brain. You know, come across and could just see a pass before it happened. Um, he was probably un unlucky, really, the way the game was going. I think in any other era, he would have made a you know a fantastic career at at that level. Very good. Uh, one question, last one, subs. How soon before we see a full team press 
including keepers on opponents' kickouts in GAA. <laughs> Soon enough, possibly. <laughs> you just never know the way the game is going. Um, maybe someone up in Donegal might come up with something like that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised nowadays what you'd see. No, they've done it before. No, so we so just kill on time there. Look at I suppose. Thanks a million for coming on. Much appreciated. Good chat. Very no problem, Mark. Um, always no a pleasure problem. talking to you, Chum. And I, I want to wish yeah. you well. And I'll see you when the gym reopens in the Glen Royal. Yeah. I want to wish you well in your career. Okay, sir. Top man. Send us down an L spin bike, will you? To keep me going. I will indeed. You let's pick it up. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Take care, so Thanks Cheers, man, sir. All the best, Pat. Take it easy. Bye-bye. 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 So that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, thanks a million for everyone watching. Um, next up is Paddy Barnes, Boxer, Wednesday night at 7 p.m. So see you all then. Take care. Bye-bye.